Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? So the Saints season came to an end on Sunday. Uh, they went out and they blew the doors off the Atlanta Falcons in the second half, 48 to 17. So uh, as, as much of a chore as it was watching this team many Sundays, to finish the season by putting Atlanta and Tampa completely, it just putting them out in embarrassing fashion. Just choking out at, uh, out Tampa Bay for three hours and blowing out Atlanta in the second half <laughs> and then adding a little insult to injury at the end was a great way to finish the season, all things considering. But for the third consecutive year, the Saints season ends without a playoff appearance. And that is unacceptable. There's a lot of layers I want to talk about. Let's start with the game itself. Um... The beginning could not have been worse. The Saints get the ball. They stall out. Uh, they punt the ball to Atlanta. And uh, Desmond Mahomes was just incredible. I mean, did you, see what, did you see what Desmond Brady did in the first half against the New Orleans Saints? Anybody catch what Desmond Manning did in the first half against the New Orleans Saints? Yeah. The guy who's been benched three times this year and only started this game because the guy for whom he was benched was injured this week had a perfect passer rating in the first half, 158.3. Not sure if you caught that. Let me say that again. Yeah, Desmond Montana had a future Hall of Famer. Desmond Montana had a perfect passer rating in the first half. 14 of 16, 231, and two touchdowns. But the Saints held Atlanta in the first half to 20 yards on eight carries. And if you remember... When they played in Atlanta earlier this season, the Falcons ran for over 200 yards on New Orleans. They had to get better at the line of scrimmage, and they were. So the Saints just play, kept playing out the string, and you knew Desmond Ritter would show up, and lo and behold, he did. He threw, just, I mean, threw a ball right into the gut of Elante Taylor to start the second half, and that would just start the avalanche for the New Orleans Saints. Uh, two interceptions, a fumble recovery. The Saints would just roll uh, of course, they would polish it off with the late touchdown by Jamal Williams, which was met with controversy. We will get to that here in just a quick second. Um, for the game itself, it was nice to see the team end on a high note. It was nice to see Derek Carr have a really good day. Four touchdown passes that matched a career high. It was nice to see Kendra Miller, who has missed most of his rookie season with injury, run hard and play really well. 13 carries, 73 yards, and a touchdown. Y'all, Peyton Turner, former number one overall, number one draft pick. Only the second game he's been active all year, got himself a fumble recovery and was pretty good in pass rush. So it was nice to see the Saints have the day that they did. Um, you know, Taysom Hill was really effective, car uh, carried six times. Rashid Shaheed was your leading receiver. Chris Olave made a beautiful juggling touchdown reception where he tipped the ball to himself. It was incredible. I mean, so there were a lot of really nice individual moments in this game to send you into your offseason with a bit of a feel-good. But the problem is that feel-good is kind of met with the disappointment of not making the postseason again. So it's conflicting. And you know, 15 weeks ago, 15 weeks ago, I sat in this chair on this day, this day 15 weeks ago, the Monday after week three, when the Saints lost at the Packers. And I did this rant to start the show, and I kept hitting the table. Do you remember that, Muse? I kept hitting the table. I remember it. I was like, you got a special teams touchdown for the first time since 2019, and you lost. And, I and then I hurt my hand, I had to do closed fist. I went and watched it again yesterday, just to make sure I didn't mess this up. And I said, week three, this is the game that's going to cost you the postseason because we've seen it the last two years. Two years ago, it was the Giants game. You led by double digits in the second half. You let Danny Dimes come back and upset you in overtime. Cost you a playoff berth. Last year, it was the game in Tampa. You led by 13 with two minutes to go. Mark Ingram ran out of bounds. You gagged it away and you lost and it cost you a playoff spot. This year, it was the Green Bay game. Oh, there's others. You should have won in Houston. You certainly had no business losing in Minnesota with Joshua Dobbs. There, the Atlanta game where you were 0 for 5 in the red zone. There were other opportunities. But in that day, you're up 17 to nothing with 12 minutes to play. 17 to nothing with 12 minutes to play. 
in Green Bay against Jordan Love, and you lost that game 18-17. And here you are, again, outside of the playoffs looking in. Against what was the easiest schedule in the history of this organization, in a division where the quarterbacks were Desmond Ritter slash Taylor Heineke, Baker Mayfield, and rookie Bryce Young. A schedule that included games against Chicago without Justin Fields where you played. What was that kid's name again from Shepard? Do you remember Division II Shepard? What was his yeah, name? Yeah, Tyson Bagent. Him. You got to play him. You played the Giants without Danny Dimes. Instead, you played Tommy Cutlets. You played Minnesota without Kirk Cousins. Instead, you played Josh Dobbs, who had been there for like a minute and a half. Who else am I missing here? You got, you got to play at Lambeau when the weather was beautiful. You didn't have to go to the frozen tundra. The point is, y'all, like over, you played Indianapolis. Anthony Richardson was lost for the year. The point is, you could not have had a, a path which was paved in gold more so than you had this year, and you still end up second in your division, missing the playoffs for the third consecutive year. It, it's a conflicting spot. First time in his career, Dennis Allen's had a winning record as a head coach. You finished by winning four out of five, which was a nice way to finish. You know, after a, uh, a really up and down season, you beat your two division opponents when you were in must win situations, one of them on the road. So there's a lot of that to say it's good. But it certainly isn't good enough. And that has to be recognized. There's a whole nother part of this. Um, and it's what happened at the end of the game. I thought long and hard about this. Um, Muse, you you like you like uh, you like the movie Ricky Bobby, right? Yes, fantastic yeah. film. You know the scene, uh, and I'm I'm going on a limb here, guessing most of our audience, our our audience is men 25, 54. I'm guessing most people have seen Ricky Bobby, right? Talladega Nights. I would hope so. Yes. Yeah. Um. You know the scene where Ricky's dad, who's a total degenerate, yes. right, just can't have anything good? They go to Applebee's. Oh, yeah. And everything's going really good, right? Perfect. Everything is going good. Hey, Ricky and his dad have reunited. The boys are there with their grandpa. Mom's asking him out. Yeah, Reese, maybe we can go dancing yeah. lessons on Tuesday night. You know, it's a great time, right? Good stuff, It's man. a great time, isn't Wholesome. it? Wholesome. And it just, it just couldn't. It just made everybody uncomfortable. So you had to go muck it up, huh? Mm -hmm. And that's what Dennis Allen did in the postgame, didn't he? Isn't that yeah. what happened? If you didn't watch the game, I don't blame you. I'll, I'll oversimplify it for you. Uh, the Saints are up 41-17. Honey Badger gets a pick. Bro, we got to talk about Honey Badger too. My guy got caught from behind by an offensive lineman. Well, I don't know what Tyron was doing. I don't know if, if it was like, hey, should I score? Should I not score? I don't know if he flat ran out of gas. I, I don't know if he just didn't see the lineman coming behind him. But that was embarrassing. We love, we love the Honey Badger, right? He is, he is iconic. But how you didn't score there, Tyron? Come on, bro. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say he was, he was conflicted on to score or not to Maybe. score. Maybe. That's what I I'm going to go so. with. That's what I'm going with. I hope with. so. Anyway. So he goes down at the one, and instead of taking a knee with a little over a minute left, the Saints punch it in for a touchdown. Uh, Jamal Williams, who led the NFL in rushing touchdowns a year ago, had none this season. He finishes with one because he punctuates that, and the Saints get to 48-17. After the game, Arthur Smith going to midfield, F-bombs Dennis Allen. You know, wondering what you're doing scoring there at the end of the game. Well, uh, Dennis Allen goes into the post-game press conference after this, and Dennis Allen, the first thing he says is, says is this. And I'm going to start off by apologizing to Arthur Smith and the Falcons. That was not a play that we intended to run down there to finish out that game. That's not who we are. That's not how we operate. We should have taken a knee. So I want to apologize to them. Because, look, we're all, we got a good rivalry, and it's a heated rivalry. But there's a way we go about doing our business, mm. and I wasn't happy about that. As soft as Arthur Smith is for F-bombing Dennis Allen, as soft as Arthur Smith is for F bomb and Dennis Allen, Dennis Allen is soft as Charmin in a hurricane for apologizing. Kick rocks, you dork. First of all, anybody who's saying today, well, it's Bush League, or, well, there's unwritten rules, shut up. 
I got a whole litany of former players, guys that were all actually played the game, starting with Tiki Barber on the broadcast. Tiki Barber on the broadcast said, Arthur Smith, shut up. How about, how about, uh, here, wait, here is the, can we play this, Paulie? This is the, this is the, our, this is Tiki Barber on the broadcast afterwards. Can you play this, please? Just play the audio. Play the audio, Muse. On the broadcast, Tiki Barber on the Ah, I got two things playing at once. That's my bad. Doggone it. Hang on. I lost all my momentum. I don't care. All right, here we go. Play it, Muse. Opinion. This is football, man. You have the right to do whatever the hell you want. This is football. So, with all due respect to Arthur Smith's opinion there, stop him. Okay. Tiki, don't, don't get mad at me. Tiki Barber. All due respect to Arthur Smith's opinion, stop him. Uh, how about Marcus Spears, the big swagoo, played a decade in the league. Arthur Smith, take your ass to the locker room. Stop him. You have way more problems than that TD. You got your ass beat by, okay, that was Marcus Spears, the big swagoo, who's also on my side. Uh, who else we got? How about Benjamin Watson, former Saint as well, uh, Georgia Bulldog, uh, uh, Baltimore Raven. Somebody tell Arthur Smith that it's the defense's job to keep the opponent from scoring, not the opposing head coach. This is embarrassing. Oh, by the way, the 11 guys in the huddle all decided that they were going to go score that touchdown. Dennis Allen, post game comes out and chastises his own players for doing it. And then you know what all of his players, to a man, have all said? Yeah, do it again. Jameis Winston, who was the quarterback, said post game, asked if he regretted it at all. Jameis said, quote, uh, nope. This is the thing. This is about the team. It's not about regrets. It's not about anything else. It's about us as a team making a collective decision. But I do apologize to Dennis. That was not his call. No apologies whatsoever there for Jameis. Oh, wait, no, play it. I'm sorry, you have it. Here was Jameis. Well, I apologize to DA yeah. because the play was, was victory. Yeah. Uh, but I also explained to DA that it was a team decision. Yeah. And I think when you have the team morale, and I asked the guys, I said, guys, like, what do you, what do you want to do? Yeah. We know how much Jamal means to this team. And, and I understood from yeah. DA's perspective. I give him that. Yeah. Yeah, but DA didn't condone that at all. Yeah. You know, he didn't. However, we decided as a team to do it, and, and you have that opportunity. We just had that opportunity, and, and we decided. Okay, that's fine. Uh Completely disregard Dennis Allen. Jameis, no apologies. Uh, Jamal Williams also said he appreciated his teammates for having him in his back and caring about him. Cam Jordan went and quote tweeted the video of Jameis and said, he got my guy, Jamal Williams, a touchdown, up, uplift a teammate at Jabbo Wins. That's my teammate. Cam Jordan completely endorsing it there. Uh, also, Cesar Ruiz in the post game, who was on the field for that touchdown, said, uh, when you've got a guy like that who comes in and works his ass off every single day, day in, day out, was the touchdown champion the year before and doesn't have one, I just wouldn't be able to go to sleep at night knowing I didn't get him one. Do you understand the point? To a man, everybody on that team, everybody on the field, all the players are saying, we wanted to get our guy a touchdown. And they went and got it. Arthur Smith, you soft. Dennis Allen, you're softer for apologizing, you weak, yellow-bellied, no blue blue boop That's in the dictionary, in the Geneva Convention. Look it up. I'm sweating now on a Monday. I've gone super long on this segment because I had to take this opportunity to tee off on Dennis Allen. Just when it looked like things were going well. Defense pitched a shutout in the second half. Offense got churning. Maybe you're seeing some potential out of this team, and then Dennis Allen had to pull a Reese Bobby and go muck it up and get thrown out of the Applebee's because that's what Dennis Allen is. And if there is no greater indictment on Dennis Allen than what happened on Sunday, I don't know that anybody will ever be convinced. His team had a direct order from him to take a knee, and they all were like, ah, bleep that guy. We're going to do what we want to do. They don't respect him. He is a substitute teacher. He is a lieutenant, not a general. And as long as he is the head coach of the New Orleans Saints, they will not be a playoff team because he is incapable of leading them there. Somebody turn on the air conditioning because I'm sweating now. Y'all complain about being cold in here. Are you cold right now, Muse? Are you cold? No, I'm actually comfortable. Polly, are you cold? Because I'm sweating. Can you see the sweat on my head? I'm wearing makeup. You can still see the sweat on my head. A little chilly in here. Hey, thanks so much for watching. 
please leave your comments. I love to interact and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.